Hi guys, it's Isabel here and Deanna, and welcome back to the channel. So, okay, you're probably wondering. Hi guys, um, what are we doing with the mic and the boot? Um, great question, and I would love to tell you why we're doing this. So, Deanna said, "Hey girl, you're gonna bump the mic to hell," which she's right. She right said, up. "You know what? Let's put it in the boot so we can have some the support." Boot mic. The, the boot, boot mic. So the boot mic is what we're doing. So in today's video, you guys, we're going to be reacting to, and this is going to be a part three to my series. And is it a part three to yours yes. as well? Okay. Yes. Perfect. 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 Okay. So we, this is a part three to the WFAB series. We both are covering the downfall of the WFAB team, all their bullshit, and just pretty much exposing some of the issues. So um, to kind of recap though, with the introduction, the first video was covering a lot of the things that were exposed by an individual by the name of Kelly. If you guys haven't watched the video, I will have it linked in the description below. Then the second video was honestly like diving into contradictions, a lot of illegal activity, cross recruiting, etc. But now, because with all this happening, with everything being exposed, with WFAB being transferred to iGenius, they didn't have the opportunity to announce everything nicely, right? So they had a Zoom call essentially talking about like these four leaders um, Jasmine, Daniela, Danielle, and then Dre talking about how they felt and if we're gonna be real here it's an absolute freaking shit show so this is gonna be set up in a way to where we have part one and part two because this is a very long call so I'll okay have part one of this video show yeah part two. but let's hop into the reaction of this shit show, shit show. okay you're out to be this evil person Right? All the top earners were- Okay, just a heads up you guys, um, we're kicking off at a specific point where they're talking about Boss Lee. So that's yes. who, sorry, that's who they're talking about by the way, if anyone's like a little bit confused on where the hell we stopped at. <laughs> talking about essentially Boss Lee, how Boss Lee was terminated from the, the company and pretty much using Boss Lee's story as a inspiration of, see, she left her old MLM mm -hmm. and joined this one and now she's better. It's not iGenius, but you know, the story of leaving one going to another. We're talking shit about her. Um, and you know how many people went with her from the first company to the second? I said she was making over mil close to a million a year. You know how many people went with her? Six. Six people. That's it. Only six. She talks about it many times on her podcast and on her stories. Only six. Okay? And look at her now. Do you even know the name of the company that she used to work for? Because not saying that you wouldn't know it, but I'm saying for her, you, you don't even, I don't even know. I don't even know like what happened before because I met her. I saw her at her greatness now right and she always said in her lives and in her podcast that that was one of the greatest moments in her career it was one of the hardest moments but it was one of the greatest moments in her career that built up her personal brand that built up who she was and now she's one of the top network marketers one of the top i would arguably say the top network marketing brands or brands and personal brands in network marketing six people that's it so with Boss Lee, if you guys do want a lot of information on her, I would suggest going and watching Cece Suarez because she has done a full deep dive mm -hmm. on Boss Lee and Dre is really trying to hype up Boss Lee. Yes. But everything she's everything that Boss Lee has done is exactly what they have done with the facade. Yes. With the online one thing's happening, Bullshit. behind the scenes another thing is happening. And I believe Cece talks about a couple other channels, Aaron and Lexi, they mm -hmm. both have channels. They were actually on Boss Lee's team, correct? Am I, am I wrong about that? Oh shit, I think that I might. believe they were on <gasps> Boss Lee's team and they've talked all about it, mm -hmm. that what you see online is not what you're getting. And exactly. it's the exact same thing for yeah. the, these girls. So when mm -hmm. they look up to her, it's not a good thing to look up to, in my no. opinion. We have 70. And I wanna say thank you to those 70 that trusted us. Um, I want that, I wanted to I wanted to say that because I thought that starts that story. I'm so happy that they vocalized this, and I I would love to tell you guys what my goal and game plan with this was. So when I watched the Zoom call, I again I naturally got pissed off, and I was like, oh hell no, because they what they were doing was technically violation of a contract. Whenever you join Monet or any company for that matter, you're signing a contract. You are legally binding yourself to those terms and conditions. And so right there, and multiple times, mind you, they vocalized their cross recruiting and what they did. That's why in my previous video I had it to where I wanted people to report them and that's why we made like an email link that was like a very quick like click on it it was a pre-written template essentially yeah. that you can send off because my thought process on this was even though I don't like Monet 
Monet can go after people that are actively scamming in a new company now, but it causes problems for both parties. Yeah. But also to further this, because I was thinking, let's say so, like Monet went after them legally. My thought process was they also go after the other company that these people are going to be part of, which is iGenius. And again, I'm not saying anything specifically is going to happen. I don't know. All I'm saying was that was my goal was pitting two fucks against each other. Much cross recruited, which they did. Do. And Monet's going to get mad about that. So and we shall see. We happens. had I, we probably. Probably, I'm not even kidding you guys. We probably had oh, bare sorry. minimum. We had bare minimum of a thousand emails sent out to Monet, like, which was fucking crazy. You- I, want that, I, wanted to, I wanted to say that because I thought that, st- that story was really, really powerful. And if, you know, if these people were able to create 46 figure earners in less than two years, it doesn't mean that they're, they're not necessarily better network marketers. They're not necessarily better recruiters. They're not necessarily better marketers. or They don't necessarily have a better community. If they could do it, why couldn't, why couldn't we? Why couldn't I do that for my people? That's, that was my, my thought process. Why couldn't I do that for my people? Now, with the WFAB strategy, with the, the, the WFAB way, the WFAB passion that we have, the WFAB leadership that we have, the WFAB love that we have, the way that we do things, the way that we've been doing things for the past two years. Okay, so that's a little bit about my th- thought process behind it. I want to thank you guys, whether you choose to continue to follow this journey or not follow this journey. Whether you choose to block me or continue to follow me, I want to thank you for supporting me this far. I want to thank you for you know showing me love this far. Um, regardless of what you choose to go going forward, I want to thank you guys for being a part of this journey because really the past two years of my life have been groundbreaking and I will never forget them. And I'm grateful for, I'm so grateful for everything that I've experienced in the past two years. So I want to say thank you to you guys. Um, I want to let you know that I love you. Whether you stay or whether you go, I love you regardless. I think that you can succeed anywhere, okay? Anywhere. I know. I know that. Put me any company. I know that I can succeed, because I know that's that's I'm the, that type of person. And if you put your mind to it, you can succeed anywhere, wherever it is that you choose. So I, I, I invite you to follow your gut. I invite you to listen to your heart, and to just do whatever feels right to you. I will love you regardless. I will support you regardless. I will continue um, to to show up on social media and support you guys regardless. There's no hard feelings. This is just the path that my heart was called. My mouth is so dry, sorry. This is just a path that my heart was called to go to. You know, I sat on it for a while. I prayed to my clouds like I normally do. You know, I spoke to myself and I, and I, and I really trusted my gut. And um, this is where my gut took me. So I hope that you guys can respect that as much as I respect you and love you guys. Um, and yeah, that's my piece. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to pass it over to Daniela Ammon. I will say, I think Dre was the the nicer of all of them in this call. Like, I do have to give, I mean, I am not happy with a lot of things she said about she's disappointed, like all of those things. But I do think she acted with more respect for people than anybody else did, especially the chick that we're about to hear from. So Which I definitely think she was the I most was respectful. I was quite surprised because- I was very way, surprised. Seeing the way that she's handled the previous situations with like, for example, reacting to the former people in companies and how she reacted It's been to, like making fun. Yes. And so I was kind of like, I genuinely, because her normal behavior is, in my opinion, giving me very childish perspectives. She handled it better Nothing was great. No, no, not great at all. The dumpster fire wasn't fully going, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I think she definitely handled it the best out of everybody. Hey, guys. Let me just pin myself. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Trey. Well, I just want to thank you guys as well for being here. I know that... um, I know that this week was a lot for a lot of people, but I want you guys to know it was also a lot for all of us. Um, like like we said, we really were not expecting it to go this way. We had really exciting plans of the way that we were um, going to present this to you guys. Um, and obviously we were, we were faced with a situation that we had to deal with. And I know that a lot of you guys probably felt like our silence on Instagram was because we felt attacked by the message um, that we were hiding from the message, but you're wrong, okay? Our silence was the message, okay? <laughs> you're wrong. An asshole right now. Do not do that. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> Immediately, she is jumping right into this conversation, just like, and no, like she's getting intense. Yeah, 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 she's yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 
pissed off right now. And I didn't really actually know too much about her before a lot of this situation. Like, I saw her a little bit, but, like, I didn't know a lot about anything, her. And so her. seeing her, I'm like, oh, what was the... What, what have we she, missed? It, yeah, I was like, what the hell did I miss? She's, she's a fucking shit show. Oh, my God. I just want you guys to understand that. You never mistake silence for defeat. Our silence in this situation was our response, okay? I've heard a lot of things circulating in the last 48 hours, and I'm going to kind of attempt to address them all here um, just so that you guys can kind of have a better understanding of why things happened the way that they did. Um, the first one was um, us limiting conversations in the chats. Okay, I heard some of you guys ask why we did that, asked if we were purposely trying to keep you guys in the dark, um, but I was actually the one who blocked the messaging. Um, and the reason that I did that, guys, is because I believe us as leaders have given up, given enough of ourselves um, at the service of others in the last two years that we deserve the opportunity to be heard out ourselves, right? We, we deserve that. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like people do have a right to be vocal about yeah. their side of the story. Totally, that's fine. But here's the thing. Let's say if you're a YouTuber and let's say you did some stupid shit, right? And you want to apologize for your actions that were terrible, okay? In my opinion, don't turn off the fucking comment section. Okay, I don't. Yeah, you've always hated that. Even I, with YouTubers, yeah. I don't like that. I don't like when people hide dislikes. I don't like the hiding of that because, if anything, there's people that could have more questions. And also, there's still additional information that could be shared and exposed in those comments section that's still important. Blocking that off after the rightfully so anger of a lot of these downlines is bullshit. Sure, you have a right to share, but so do the downlines. They have a right to say, hey, this is fucked up. And that's what bothers me. They had every opportunity to handle this well. Not saying I like it, but they could have handled it in a mature way, and not a like a degrading way too. Very distasteful. Exactly. Yeah. And so when they're like, well, we, we have a right to share a story. No one's saying you can't share your story. That's kind of what people wanted. They wanted you to actually fucking talk about what you were gonna do. And so now, like, oh, I turned it off. Like, okay, wrong move. Do you really think people are gonna actually give a shit now and wanna hear you out if you're like, I'm just gonna shit you up right now and you're gonna listen? Like, yeah. what the hell? Not much, okay? Um, despite like tons of allegations from all angles, right? Us leaders have been silent about the situation because we choose now and we will always choose to move with love in any situation. Okay. I don't, I don't believe in how things were handled here at all. I don't respect it. I guess you could say, um, for those of you, I just wanted to address, like for those of you who felt that in order to ease your uncertainty or kind of justify your feelings in the situation that you needed to drag someone online or drag the WFAB community on your social media without even hearing uh, from us first, I want you to ask yourself if that aligns with your feelings against the mean girl energy that everyone's talking about. Does, does that, is that? Ew. Mm -hmm. Ew. Yeah. Fucking gross. They twist everything mm -hmm. into something that it's not. So for them, this is all hateful. Mm -hmm. For them, Kelly exposing the truth about what happened mm -hmm. behind the scenes to them is hateful. It's like, no, she just wanted to tell the truth to mm -hmm. all of the people that she seemed to care about. Yes. And she wants people to see what's really happening. And that opened up the Pandora's box yes. for all of us. Mm -hmm. And I actually think it's funny that they shut their comments off and all that stuff because yeah. by doing that, more people have reached out to people like us mm -hmm. and are giving us all of the information, sending us stories, sending us DMs, yes. sending us everything because they are not allowing anybody to have a conversation. Yeah. So by you doing that, like telling people that they're just mean girls or whatever, you're not helping yourself. You're making yeah. it worse. And it's ironic to me how they call it hate when it was hardcore proof of what they were doing. And yeah. it bothers me because Kelly literally exposed the plans of what was going on because it, they, like, she knew she was going to affect people negatively. And to me, that's, that's big because people had a right to know. And so the fact that they were so pissed off about that, it wasn't fake. Like, it was all true. And it ended up being completely Facts true. Facts aren't hate. No, but she's like, oh, it's all hate. It's all hate. Where's, where, what, what part of this is hate? Does, does that, is that not the same thing? Okay, that, that was really, really disappointing. I saw a lot of really, really disappointing posts and stories um, from people who have benefited off of all of our leadership and mentorship over the past two years and yet felt- Oh my God, I did something for you and now you owe me everything. Your whole fucking life. You owe me Give your first me. Your child. Money. Your, your money, your time, your it. everything. Absolutely everything. Fuck your family, I fuck was your nice kids. to you one time, therefore you owe me everything. No, I don't give a fuck. If somebody has been nice to me at one point, and then they become an asshole later or I realize it. It's called being a good human, okay? Bar is on the floor. <laughs> Bar is on the floor here. We shouldn't be holding, hey, I mentored you, I did this. 
I get it, but only reason <laughs> they're mentoring is because they financially benefit. The individuals, I would never, honestly, if I was in an MLM, say I was in one, and you don't need to recruit or anything like that, I'm not mentoring anybody. They would never do what they do. They would never fake the facade and say this whole leadership thing unless they were financially benefiting. So they want to use it to like control everyone and be like, well, we worked for you. We did this and that for you, but you only did it for your benefit, mm -hmm. for your money. And they're going to say that they do it for other reasons. But let me tell you, they don't. They, in my opinion, they do it for yeah. money because by leading people, yes, by giving them copy and paste messages that yes. are all messed up. But anyways, by doing that, by doing these team calls to keep them motivated, mm -hmm. by doing all the disgusting manipulative tactics, that's making you more money and making them lose more money. So that's what it comes down to. Nothing else. It's very comfortable bashing us and our community. And I just want to say as someone who as someone who cared personally about a lot of you guys, that's really disappointing. Um, and I hope you see how much more that that's gonna hurt your personal brand than it's gonna hurt the culture of WFAP, okay? <laughs> you really you really think that you're gonna do super duper well after this. You really, you really think that them speaking up about them getting lied to and manipulated is gonna hurt them more than this shit show. All I gotta say is good luck, Charlie, cause you are <laughs> uber fucked now. <clears throat> Another thing, guys, that I wanted to mention is just to kind of just knock all these conversations I've been hearing. Yeah. Fake tears. Where are they? <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but like, where are they? Like, you had to. What are we sniffling back? It's just Morals? so unauthentic. <laughs> it's so unauthentic. I'm not. It is so feel bad for us. Feel bad for us because we financially benefit from you and we're trying to do it more. Like, it does yeah. not make sense to me. <laughs> There's a ring light in front of you, bitch. I need to see sparkles. I don't see nothing. There's no sparkle, no tear. There's tier. nothing. And to be heartbroken, okay? We know a fake cry when we see one. It's not easy to <laughs> do this for a Zoom call, okay? Yeah. Floating around just to like knock them all off the table. Um, and the first one being the fact that a lot of you guys have talked about how you don't need to be in an MLM to trade crypto, okay? And I just want you guys to let, to let you guys know that we're very aware of that. Um, as someone myself who is not an expert in crypto, has no time to be an extra, an expert in crypto, has no desire to be an expert at crypto and stare at charts all day. I'm a customer myself of, of this company um, and their auto trader. I'm, I'm, an, I'm a network marketer, right? I'm a speaker, I'm a mentor, I'm a growth coach. Um, and I, I have plans to do massive things in this life. I'm not a trader and I never want to be okay. And this is why I felt led to be able to promote this product because I know there are millions of people. Look, I want to jerk my teeth on concrete right now. I'm just she's the worst in this call yeah. until Jasmine pops off in a minute yep. too. Mm -hmm. I just can't even wrap my head around it. Like I'm actually flabbergasted. This, this is another thing that I'm kind of thrown off about right now. Okay. So but this is my thought process. If I'm going to do something, I want to be knowledgeable in it. Okay. So for example, yes. like I haven't started up certain business things that I want to do because I know I'm not there yet. I know I'm not capable to be the best that I can be. And my goal is, is I want to be able to hire people. I want to be able to do so good for them. Yeah, like yeah. I want to nail that job, but I know right now I'm just not that place. Yeah. And, but that's the thing is, I need to also be self-aware of those actions, the work that I'm going to require those people to do. I want to be, I want to be involved yeah. because I don't want to do something and not have an understanding of how to do it. Or like, for example, even with like taxes and all that, I want to teach myself and consult with people and talk because I want to know how to do things hands on. So it's odd to me that you're going to promote an investing thing, but you truly don't even know what you're doing, nor do you say that you want to have any involvement with it or like have a hands-on thing in it. Like, so no credibility. Like oh, you, yes. in my opinion, with MLMs, the thing that makes me the most frustrated, not mm -hmm. the most, there's a lot, but what makes me really frustrated is with MLMs, the non-expertise that they have. So with mm -hmm. Monet not being a professional, um, trying to sell their skincare when you're not an esthetician. Yeah. I've had people in Rodan and Fields tell me that they could like, fix my eczema and stuff like that mm -hmm. for my skin. And I was like, literally, don't talk to me. You're not my dermatologist. Like uh, Beachbody, I, I thought I could give people like physical fitness advice and I have learned, heck no, that is disgusting. You should not be doing that. Yes. And that's why I teach people, don't do that shit. You're not a personal trainer. You are not a um, like licensed to anything in nutrition. So for them to go into crypto and they all say, oh, we don't want to be experts. If you look at, I'm actually going to be reacting to some stuff about that, but mm -hmm. they copy each other and all say, we don't want to be experts. Yeah. We're just professional network marketers. 
No, you need to be an expert if you're going to teach people how to invest yeah. their money. Or, like, or people are going to lose their money. It gives you the title of scammer even more, in my opinion. Because if you're joining a company like this, you should be invested in an understanding of what yeah. you're selling to them. And even if you partially know... I just feel like you're gonna focus more on you have the selling of it instead of the actual investing. I don't want to be knowledgeable on this. Well, good job, dipshit. That yeah, makes you look weird. like a fucking moron. Out there like me who have absolutely zero interest in trading, but they also don't want to be left behind in the crypto world, right? That's me addressing that. Another thing I want to address, like Jasmine mentioned as well, the lawsuits, the previous company names, I saw you guys mentioning that. We have looked into every single one of these legitimate and illegitimate claims made previously in this company before deciding to take this route. We've sat with top executives of this company. We've asked them 350 questions. We've dug deep. We've had um, outsiders. We've sourced companies. We've done it all already in the last few weeks. Um, the same exact way we looked into all of the claims and lawsuits regarding the adverse effects of products that we were promoting previously. So I just wanted to mention that because I think a lot of you guys, like I saw so much circulating and, and it, it kind of looked like you guys thought we just made this decision overnight. Like we definitely did our due diligence here um personally i don't i don't trust the due diligence because anytime i have talked to someone in monate i have read through a lot of the lawsuits and i'm no law professional but it's very easy to figure out what is going on in certain lawsuits how they're settled why they've been settled things like that and i never had someone in monate personally give me factual information about the lawsuit so i don't trust them actually looking at both sides i guarantee she just said oh we talked to executives in the company well duh they're going to sell their company to a w fab team where they have brought how many people within 24 hours over 70 people uh, yeah. in 24 hours yes why wouldn't they tell you whatever they want to tell you in my opinion so i don't trust it um Another thing I saw um, was people making jokes about how all the shampoo girls are going to turn crypto. But guys, like, who here has had more than one job before? If you were selling jeans at Aritzia and then you found a better job or opportunity selling credit cards at TD Bank, is everyone in your life going to drag you on social media for switching uh, the vehicle that you use to put food on your table? No. It this is not putting food on most people's table. That's our fucking Look at issue. your income disclosure statements. Look at the facts. Look at, why don't you guys take your team and everyone shows their paycheck, but then you actually walk through their bank statements and we Ooh. say, what have you bought? What did you spend on the yachts that we went on this month? How much did you spend to fly out here, to go mm -hmm. here, to travel here? I do like videos on like these trips and I even in Beachbody spent over a thousand dollars on each trip I've ever been on. And in mm -hmm. a year, that's a lot of money, yeah. which is why I was in debt, not in debt, but like I was negative after the MLM. And there'd be nothing wrong with getting a different job. Like I've been there, I was in the army, I did this, I did that. Like you've done multiple things yeah. and nothing's wrong with that. If you are not actively hurting people, if you are actually actively hurting somebody, that's where the problem comes in. If you go from one company to the next and you continue to hurt people, that's the problem. Oh, I think my thought process though is there's nothing wrong with building experience. Let's say when I left my uh, waitressing job, did that fuck people over of their income, stability, nothing? No, it didn't. As an independent individual, me leaving did not ruin people's lives, for crying out loud. The actions that I partook as a waitress, no, or even as a barista, or even with my internship marketing, if I leave that, it's not the end of the world. This is an entirely different ball game. And also, mm -hmm. I am totally cool with people going to different jobs for experience, like, reasons. Yeah, it's and good. growth. Absolutely. You grow as a human, and you go from job to job, and you do Absolutely. different things. You get college degrees, or or certifications mm -hmm. or whatever it may be and you're going to move job to job but don't hurt people in the process or there's going to be issues and that's why we've called these people out because yeah. they caused significant harm you're leaving it going to a different one and screwing people over and gaslighting them to hell and back no. information control controlling what they think how they say blaming what they believe blaming you know. it's disgusting what's happening and that's why they get called out it's totally okay to switch vehicles and network marketing in fact like Dre mentioned, a lot of top earners in network marketing have worked for more than one company during their career. And it's also okay, and I wanna stress this too, it's also okay if you choose not to switch. If you're happy with the success that you've seen, if you're happy with the impact that you've made in our previous company, it is absolutely your right to stay with them and continue building your business there with your brand. In fact, I would happily connect you with a lot of other successful teams in Monet that would be happy to assist you. Okay, I'll, I will be a customer of our previous company for life. Okay, I'm totally obsessed with all of our products. I'm totally obsessed with what the company stands for. We're, we're all I can see. Does anyone have a bet on how long it's going to take for them to use a different product? How much are we going for? Mm, 
I'd give it. You know what? They're going to think that we forgot in like six months or three. But and they have to use the rest of their products maybe. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, because a lot of They've got a lot. You know, we're, we're all, I can speak for all the leaders, we're extremely appreciative of them and everything that they've given us, everything that they've taught us. However, I know what kind of impact that I need to make. The impact that I was born to make. The lives that I was born to change. And a company this big, guys, we're just small fish in a really big bowl. And that was something that just has been sitting with me so much over this last month is I know me and my leaders and the people that I'm in this business with, we have a lot of impact to give. And we, we, we're in a big bowl with a lot of fish. What kind of impact are we talking about here? Because there's impact. And then there's impact. <laughs> and so <laughs> impact can mean multiple things here. Impact can mean I impacted your life to where you fucking hate it or impact of making it better. And as we can see by your audience's reactions and all the DMs I think all of us have oh, yeah. gotten it's about their crazy. horrific stories, which is going to be coming out here soon on my channel. I'm interviewing people literally from mm -hmm. the WFAB team. It's bad. It's fucking bad. So oh. impact in a good way, my ass. So moving to a smaller company, a more innovative company, we're bigger fish in a smaller bowl. And I know that that's what's going to give me the opportunity to impact more, help my people eat more, and ultimately do what I set out to do in the first place right? Which was help others. And I want you guys to understand that WFAB, it was created for a reason. And that reason is to impact people and to guide people and to help as many people as possible to the freedom that we speak so much about, right? So moving WFAB into a different vehicle that we believe has a structure that will help us help more people. That's exactly in alignment with everything that we've always stood for, always. And I just want you guys to know that because like, it sucks how you guys heard about it because this was not a negative thing. This is always and has always been a positive thing. This change is going to blow it all out of the water, right? Like, like Dre said, we've had four six figure earners in the last two years. Four. We have friends. Wait, wait, wait. She clarified. Fuck. This, this is our popcorn chocolate covered nuts, baby. In guys. the previous video, you thought that they said 40 liters. In part one, in part one part I thought one, yeah. that Ray said that they had 40 liters. Mm -hmm. She just clarified four. Four people that made six figures. That is horrible stats, my friends. Gosh, whoa. In this new company that produced 40 six-figure earners in two years. Imagine what that means for all of you. Imagine what that means for my leaders. Imagine what that means for the people that have been loyal to me since I started. I have girls that have been with me since my first week here, you know, and they're not making the money that I want to see them make. And it's not fair for all of us to sit here at the top and sit here living our life when we preach freedom for all of you. That is what led us to make this change. That is what's moving. They could have done. They could have gotten on a call. They could have been, hey guys, we didn't tell you sooner. This is what we're going to tell you. We wanted the best for you. This is why we think it's this the best for you. could have been two minutes. Fucking yes. Not a whole and hour. And then they a Q&A where people could ask questions. God, see, look at that. And they clarified. This would have been fucking easy. Whoever gives them these ideas, I have a feeling it might be Jasmine. Fucking moron. Okay. This is terrible. They could have not had as much problems. Because they're pissing people off during this. And the way that you get people to listen to you and actually consider your opinion is to not, not on them. Yeah, not by berating them or yeah, gaslighting yeah, 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 them yeah. or being rude and like with the tone. You're not humble. You're a fuck. It reminds me of the iconic YouTuber apologies where they're like sitting on the floor. <laughs> they're like this. No, I need to <laughs> pause. All right, Danny, you want an apology to make in three, two, one, make it count. Okay, you guys. Mm -hmm. So. I know I fucked up. And I know I hurt a lot of people. And I, I just want to say I'm so sorry. And I will never do it again. And then you do it again tomorrow, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I have to make an apology. Okay. The YouTuber apology. With the cone head. Hey, guys. So, as you know, I've been gone for a whole 24 hours. It's 24. <laughs> I can't. And I know... I haven't been on the internet in a while, um, and I'm sure you're wondering why I've been gone. I hold on. Okay, um, I did a very bad thing. I'm trying to sell this. I know. Um, but <laughs> I just I want you to know I'm I'm sorry, and I I did everything completely on purpose. But I am devastated because I don't want to lose money, and I hope you can forgive me. Okay, are we done? <laughs> <laughs> the legendary YouTube apologies are horrific. It's what's going down. But it's literally, that's the same. The fake tears, the ass landing you, still full of shit. 
God, this is bad. It's like, I'm sorry I scammed you, but I'm going to scam you again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. I fucked up, but I'm going to do it more. What's moving us to make this change? Because we know we can make bigger impact on more lives than just ours. Okay, so I'm going to pass it back to Jazz. She has a little bit more to say. Um, and I'll speak to you guys a little bit later. Jazz. Got it, guys. Hold on. Okay, guys, so that's that's pretty much um, like addressing everything. I hope we have been able to address the majority of the, the questions that you guys may have. Um, anything else that we thought, um, you know, anything else um, is personal, okay? Anything else that you guys want answers to, that's personal, okay? I want to keep this business-wise, um, impact-wise, um, solution-based-wise, um, to help again, WFAP and get them to the next level. Um, with that being said, we are moving to the next level. Okay. I joined this profession, not to play it small, right? Just like Daniela said, I joined this profession, not to play it small. You guys, I joined this profession to create a legacy. Okay. I don't know about you guys, but like, this is bigger than just me, way bigger than just me. You guys are here to get the, um, the hope that you guys need, the, the light, the positivity, the impact that you guys need every single day to, to take your life to the next level. It's called what light fucking and part of this was light and positive? This was like depressing. My like, morning shit kidding. this morning was more light and positive than this. <laughs> <laughs> Made you feel real good after. I felt this, light this and positive call, after that. Call, like, no one's feeling good after. Nobody's feeling happy about this. I, I love what I do, guys. I love what I do. I love impacting you guys. I love seeing the smiles on your face every single time I talk to you guys. I love, um, I love you know, seeing people like change their lives because w fab as a whole has been able to impact that one life so and, and i do want to address as well too i do love what i love what i i i got from from the previous company that was a little too hard for you to say there jasmine you st <laughs> you stumbled over that a little too fucking hard and um just like daniela i get getting these products because i love them trust me so anyone who wants to be um you know i, I could i will be an amazing customer to you guys because I will continue buying these products. I will continue to support um, this company because it has done a lot for me, okay? Um, I will continue to support the people who stay in this company as well too. We are here today to just let you guys know where we're moving, where we're moving, right? And that's pretty much it. And it, it, you, you guys can come with us or you guys can stay, okay? Um, we are here to help a lot of people. I know you guys hear it all the time, but really and truthfully, that's, that's, that's the big picture. And I know that in 2022, that's what's gonna happen, okay? Um, and somebody said, can we talk? No, we cannot, because we're saying our piece. You guys said your piece online. We're saying our piece right here, okay? And I'm saying How my piece. disgusting. Mm -hmm. What? Are they fucking five? Are they children that cannot speak fucking freely? Fucking doorknobs. That is so degrading. And like, that just, just shows me that yeah. everything that you Kelly cannot. exposed yeah. about this team and in those voice memos is exactly how she will act to everybody else. And you know what's so funny to me? Clearly Jasper's not getting her way because she's a fucking teenage mean girl, honestly, mentally, in my opinion. She doesn't have the capacity to actually give a shit from what it looks like. So my thought process is, if someone did do what she wanted, was she this pissy and rude during all their trainings and calls? Because she reacted negative to a negatively to a situation. In my opinion, when you're a leader, you need to handle that shit good. Mm -hmm. Like a boss. Like a mature, mature adult. Where is that? Where is that? No, where she just wants to silence everybody. But but you say, ask us questions. How the hell are they supposed to do that? Uh, and why, again, their lives being turned upside down. You think they can have a form of closure or something besides what you want to shove down their throats. I just, I'm so done with these people. They're a whole different level of nasty. This is, it's like once you stop doing for them the exact to a T what they want you to do for them, boom. because again, they make money off of you. Mm -hmm. They do this. They silence you. They control your information. They tell you that they're disappointed in you. They gaslight you. Mm -hmm. They do every manipulation tactic you could yep. probably think of. All of the fallacies. Literally everything. They get mean. It, yeah. It, it, it's disgusting, this whole thing. Um, so I'm going to bring up Daniela, and then we're going to end it off with Daniela uh, Amin, um, and then we'll go from there. So, guys. Oh. There we go. So guys, with everything being said that, you know, in this call today, it's 
it has everything to do with the vision of where we're headed. And like Jazz said, I am, I pay full respects to this, this company we were in. I pay full respects to everything I've learned, everything that I've gained along the way. And I really want to paint this vision for you guys. So you understand what goes through in my mind as well. Like when it comes to the vision, um, you know, I was a nor normal and I still am average everyday girl working a job since I was 14 years old. And I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I never wanted to work for somebody else. And I always wanted to pave my own path. And I quickly realized that when I started my lash extension business, um, you know, I, I wanted financial freedom. I wanted time freedom. I wanted to be able to, you know, to live my life on my own terms. And I built that to an amazing business that supported me a lot. But I also realized that I was overworked. And it didn't fulfill my visions. It did to a certain extent. And listen, I made a lot of money, but it wasn't about the money. It was about my, my passion for my freedom, my passion to feed my family, my passion to impact people. My paychecks in my lash extension business, what, that was not the real paycheck for me. It was, you know, seeing Jasmine get her lashes done and go to the mirror and look at them saying, oh my God, I love them. Thank you so much. I feel so pretty. I feel it was the impact I was making on people. And when I got into network marketing with my first company, that was one of the biggest reasons, the impact, the growth, to be able to, to help other women, other men make that impact as well. And if I find my, found myself, you know, struggling to do that because yes, I was impacting. Yes, my girls were impacting, but they weren't being fulfilled in so many other areas. So just like the reason why I left my lash extension company, which was one vehicle that I took towards a step towards entrepreneurship, I hopped on this company to fulfill those same, same, that same vehicle. And I'm continuing to grow. She's saying her whole team is not fulfilled because what's happening here is they're not saying Monate's when she's saying my, mm -hmm. my first company, she's, this chick is talking about Monate right now. She I'm curious is. why they're not saying it, but she's like, my, my team, my girls weren't fulfilled. But was that what you were promoting on social media? No. Yeah. No. Would you like to share? Would you like to give us a fucking clear answer for once? It's the, the contradicting that goes on and the yes. facade they put on social media yes. versus what's actually happening that's really messed up. That's Continuing to grow forward. And like we we're also, and like Daniela Ammon said, like Drama said, like this is not, you know, you do not have to follow us. Whatever you decide to do, that's your decision respectfully. Respectfully, keyword. I respect absolutely everybody who decides to stay. I respect everybody who decides to come. At the end of the day, this is your choice, your decision. We are just simply letting you know what we are moving forward to. And if you would like to come with us, amazing. If you don't want to come with us, amazing. Regardless of where you go, you are going to have your success. You are going to con continue to thrive. All we ever aim to do is to help you get there faster with big impact, with big movement, with big motion, right? And with that being said, I, I hope that you guys do continue to thrive with love with respect with honesty moving forward and with fulfillment and i wish you know ever the journey we got a sign we missed it we missed it did we wait there's one more uh, there. oh what's the sign say no, what's no, the no. sign say can we talk this is for us oh can we talk Shit. this is for that's us. the girl with the popcorn i like you uh, and just say again like i know that in the past days there was just a lot of negativity circling and that can be really hard to absorb okay it was hard for us leaders to but after today, I want you guys to know that this is in the past for us, okay? We are leaving this call ready than ever, more ready than ever to embark on this new chapter, ready to create more success stories than ever, ready to learn about financial literacy, ready to impact better than ever, ready to scale, ready to create 56 figure earners in 2022, ready to break through, okay? And for those of you on this call who know my story, you guys know I've done a lot of breaking through in the last two years, okay? I shed a lot of skin. I rebuilt many times. I loved, I lost, I learned, I led all while raising this little child of mine. And I want you guys to know that this was a very scary decision for me at first. I knew I wanted more impact than I was making. I knew I wanted more of my people to see the success that they deserve, but it was it was hard to imagine walking away from what I built here. This 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 saved me, this, this season saved me, right? So as leaders, we, we have a lot more on the table than you guys realize, right? And when Jasmine, when she first told me she was really serious about making this move, guys, we were sitting in her office and, and I'm looking at this and I thought to myself, if she's willing to walk away from all of this, how could I not go with her? What do I have to lose that she didn't? And that night when I got home, my son slept in my bed and I just looked at him while he slept for over an hour and I cried and I just prayed that God would allow me to do right by him. And I asked him to give me a sign that this was the right move. <laughs> the next day, 
the Staples Center publicly announced that they were changing their name to crypto.com. I was all in. I don't question signs from God and I don't question the women that God- So apparently she was stating that this was, that was her public sign from God that she needs to do this because the Staples Center switched their name to crypto. I'm so well, what what is the Staples Center got to do with this? I don't fucking know. Apparently she just saw that like that was her sign from the world or God. Like I just that that I hate the whole God led me. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I'm that I'm going to be completely upfront and real with you here. God is not going to be I I know I'm Christian, but God is not going to be vibing with this. He's not going to be like, "Yes, go move to a company that's going to fuck people over." Woohoo! Like He's gonna. He's not gonna be hyping you up for that. Nor is he gonna give you a sign to do it. Okay. That's why I think she just tried to use something that was so out there, like the Staples Center. What do they have to do with all of this crypto and all of that stuff has been prominent a lot within the past, I would say, year. Yeah. Especially since the pandemic, it's like you're seeing that everywhere. You could look tomorrow. We seen it on a taxi. Was that a sign that like yeah. crypto? We need to go invest. No. no. If that's like me saying like, oh my god, God. If I'm if I'm gonna meet a man this week, can I drive past a red car when I go to work? <laughs> There's fucking red cars That's everywhere. What I'm trying to say that 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 Staples Center thing just didn't make sense. I know that in 90% of conversations, Bitcoin or crypto gets brought up in some way, shape, or form. The world's talking about it, which is free promo for us. However, I'm not here to. I fucking say, yeah. If everyone's talking about it, it's not surprising or a unique sign from God. That the Staples Center said. If the Staples Center changed it, that probably the you know what that's lit. That sounds cool. Because it's, it's just common, becoming common now. Yeah, it's not a sign for you to join a fucking predatory company. Because I'm a strong believer in whoever is aligned with me will come, and whoever isn't won't. And it's no hard feelings. Like I said, I had someone ask me today, like, can, can will you still support me, and and can I still come to you if I need anything? A hundred percent. But this is where we're headed. WFAB 2.0, it's going to be publicly launched next week. And this was a very, very calculated decision for us. So we have an entire game plan for the entire year of 2022. We have new systems. We have a new marketing plan. We have new campaigns. We have a ton of support during this transition. And WFAB is going to 10x in this next year. This was in no way a setback for us. And I want you guys to know that. The way that we see it, like I just said, whoever's aligned with us will come on this journey. And whoever isn't will not. And that's okay. You guys are all on your own journey and your own path too, but this is ours. And we know the massive value that we offer not only this community, but to everyone we encounter and switch influences. You need to be careful who you're listening to. You need to be careful who you're influenced by. You need to be careful who you get your information from and who you're based crucial decisions in your life, life off of. Their ceiling could be your floor. God, I agree. And you are the fucking floor, okay? <laughs> Good God. You will never know that if you keep mimicking the actions of people who are not headed in the direction that you want to go. Never ever be loyal to someone else's limitations. Another sign. Was so y'all leave in the first community. Mm. They just keep trying to ask questions. Like they just want to know shit and they can't even ask. I feel so bad. I know. Your gut. I encourage you to follow your gut. Follow your heart and follow what you feel in your soul. Because if you don't know, if you don't, you'll always wonder. And if you do, well, then you'll know for sure. Where was that same energy, though, when they say f there's nothing wrong with redirecting yourself? Where is that same energy to the people that left WFAB? Because from what I've seen, you mm. you guys have apparently harassed people over it and treated them like shit. So where was that energy when they weren't aligned with Monet and said that they wanted to do something else? Yeah, they were treated like crap. Fucking hypocrites. Well, then you'll know for sure. I'm led in my heart, in my soul, to go in this direction. And if you are not, I encourage you to stay stay exactly where you are. But if you are... See where it takes you. And if you're still on this call and you've taken the time to hear us out from beginning to end, I just want to thank you guys. Regardless whether you plan to join us, whether you plan to part with us, we love you. Like Jazz was saying, we've we've shared a massive part in each other's lives over these last two years. And I'm grateful for that regardless. And despite all of the hate that's circled this week, like I'm more excited than ever. Drained, but more excited than ever. And if you if you feel still that you need any more info that wasn't clarified on this call, or if you wish to join us, if you wish not to join us, if you just want to talk about it, please just reach out. See. Wait. <laughs> run! <laughs> no! What? Run, girls, run. This sappy shit is a fucking joke. Exclamation, exclamation, Period. exclamation. Yeah. So their literal team that's on this call is telling people to freaking run. They're right, And though. they know it's a sappy, like, little, oh, poor me. Get out. Somebody who can help you um, that's still over there. Um, and if you're just 
parting ways all together. I wish you well in literally everything you do. There's definitely opportunity for you, whichever route you guys decide to go. So again, we love you and we appreciate you guys for supporting us this far. Um, like I said, we're really excited about this new journey. I'm excited for the people that have already joined us and I'm, I'm excited for the people who haven't too, right? Because that just means you guys are following following your gut. And <laughs> This is icon. This is the our moment. popcorn girl, right? Is it popcorn I think girl? It's popcorn girl. So, awesome. so uh, there's another sign, and it says, "Y'all keep removing me because what's happening is we're watching Jasmine see people make these signs and yes. kicking them out of the Zoom call. So this, <laughs> y'all keep removing me. Oh my god, I'm dead. Nobody deserves to be attacked, guys. Um, we're all human beings. We all go our own direction, and we're all just on a learning on our own chapter in our own learning journey. So. Again, I wish you guys the best, um, and we are free to clarify if you guys need any more clarification. So good night, guys, and I thank you guys for sitting with us um, this far, and we, we wish you guys the best. Bye, guys. So they want people to personally reach out to them, which I actually find a problem with because oh. of the amount of control they want to have over people's information. Mm -hmm. They only want you to get information in DMs because they don't want others to see what that individual is saying. Amen. So they're sitting here being like, no, you can't talk to us. Like, you don't have a right to talk to us. You have people making these signs. They're kicking them out. We're watching Jasmine kick them out yep. of this freaking Zoom every time mm. they do a sign. But then they say, reach out to us personally. Why? Why can't people just ask their questions on this call? It's just a whole bunch of BS. I but just, that was the end of the call. Yeah, that was it. That was a lot. But I'm, again, so thankful that this was exposed because this yeah. was a perfect opportunity to say, see, look at that. The caring, all loving, and we have your best interest at heart leaders. Yeah. This is their representation right here. So that was horrific, but I'm glad that we're, it's out. So thank you for partnering with me. And thank you for teaching. <laughs> thank you for working with me on this journey. Um, it's so hard. A lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I've been. Are you crying? Yeah. Yeah. Do you see the tears? Oh my God. I see the tears. They're just dripping. I know. <laughs> Listening. But yes. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was fun as hell. Oh my God. We're going to, we're going to do this another time. Yes. Next, next time I get her ass with me, we're doing this again. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all in the next, the next one. Freaking video. Baby. Bye! Monet can kiss my ass. Is that? that ass! Oh, princess, this small ass! <laughs> Anyone's ass!